what parts of your career or just throughout your life would you say were the most trying? Like, what was the hardest points? Were you like, let's say in the, for you in the fight game where you were going through it, where you were like, damn, maybe this is not for me or this is just so difficult. Like, were there any moments that felt like the lowest for you along the way? Uh, my first professional loss followed by the second professional loss back to back, two split decision losses, but um, my job was on the line and I was like, man, maybe I should have just stuck to teaching and not even try to aspire to do something bigger. And um, the fact that I was able to come back one more time and I was able to win, dude, I was in tears after that. Wow. I'm having a reminiscing moment. Don't judge me. <laughs> uh, dude, because it, it's just like, you have this image of yourself and you think that you're going to be this thing and then it doesn't happen and you kind of, dude, you fall short and you're just like, you question everything. All the choices you made, why you did what you did, you could have been doing something else, could have been more stable, you, you don't have to put your ass on the line for millions of people to see for the rest of eternity on the UFC's bookshelf of fights to come yeah and it's just like man we take this chance hoping to chase a dream and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and uh i commend anybody who could do this sport bro anybody bro it's it's not easy it's the hardest thing i think ever what kept you going then how did you after that you're like fuck it uh what kept me going after that I mean, it's def it was definitely the money, even though it wasn't that big of a payday, because I, I lost the next two fights on my second contract, and it was the same pay. But it was just more like, win or lose, I want you to kind of just kind of go out on your own way, and ah, fuck, I can't. <laughs> I'm trying not You're to. You're good, man. Like, ah. You're good. Man, this shit gets me, dude, I've... It's I normal. think people people only see the wins, man. They don't see all the other shit. But yeah. but that's why we try to talk about it. Because that, 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 like all that made you who you are. Yeah, that but it was just like, here. man, fuck. I get it, bro. Trust. I mean, from a different vein, obviously. Yeah, it's just, uh, and it was just like win or lose, man. It was just one of those things like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do this as best as I can and at the end of the day, I could look at myself in the mirror and be like, dude, you gave it everything you had. Yeah. And, and that was it for me. And that's why I, like, I, I, I tell people, man, like, dude, fuck it. You got a fucking dream. You got to go, man. Go for it. Life is short. And if it doesn't work, you could at least be like, you fucking tried. You yeah. tried. If you never tried, it's just like, it's easy to sit there from your couch and judge people and say this and that. You suck. You, do, you should be doing something else, but um, I'm just happy I, I stuck with it. And, man, who would have thought fucking, man, what was that? Almost 10 years later, seven years later, be fucking a world champion, defended the belt three times, nine fight win streak, fought all over the world. It's bought my mom a house. That's probably the most it's beautiful, man. craziest thing I've, I think ever been able to do and then life's good bro yeah life's, life's great. good it, it could be so much worse and i think about all the people who have it worse than us man i'm healthy i can still work i can still chase opportunities and dreams even though it might not be easy like for even for me now people are probably like it's easy you say because you won so many fights and you got money did i didn't always have money and i think that's the most important part I, I've come from humble beginnings, and I was happy to make 250 and 250. My pro debut, bro, 250 dollars to show up, 250 dollars to win, and I thought I was the richest man in the world because I was doing what I loved, and that was the most important thing. And here I am making a living, and I couldn't be more blessed and grateful for everything. It's beautiful, Al, man. Aljo was a UFC fighter, and he was still teaching in high school. Uh, still Russia. teaching. He was still yeah. working. He was still working. Yeah. And then, yeah. And, and also one more thing. Um, so 
New York, Long Island, where we where we was training, we still training with our team. Where is our team? So Ray Longo, he's a kickboxing <coughs> coach, and um, uh, and uh, for jujitsu, he was going to Metzera's gym. So we was doing straight jujitsu and uh, a little bit of kickboxing and just how we was fighting. But and I'll just say we gotta figure out something. We did. I he he's I'll just start traveling after. Like he was a UFC and and he saw how like uh, everybody was training and then he saw we gotta do something else. We need the MMA training. Like not only just go jujitsu, not only keep boxing because this is not MMA, you know. And then I'll just start MMA class. And since that, like now we have like so many UFC fighters in our gym because of now we have this still classes still going around and then. Uh, this class helps Aljo to get better. Classes get me. It's and beautiful. The, 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 the gym grow up, and now it takes so many people are training, and so and um, uh, and like you know that's you know it's Aljo. Is, he's not selfish. You know he's just he just works hard and show everybody that if you work hard, you will you will you will get successful. It's not in secret. Just work hard. Look how how I work, and you do same, and you just do your thing. You know. Just yeah, and uh, he's it's not like he's not like um, yeah. So that no, it's beautiful paving the way your own way, man. I mean, it's 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 clear you you know you give a fuck about it for sure. You definitely live the life where you're like, damn, you you see the value and almost like where you're at now. Maybe it feels good. You're probably emotional because like you're in a position now where you're kind of able to give back maybe the things that you didn't necessarily grow up with, which is probably why it hits that 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 chord in you. Because I definitely relate to that where I'm at. It's and more when I think about it, man. When I think about it, it hits so much deeper because then I feel like I'm back in that at headspace. Yeah, that's why I just try to live in the moment. Because when I, I'm not saying it's not good to kind of go back and reflect where you come from and everything, but it's just such sad moments and tough moments. It's just like dark places. But doesn't that I feel it? Doesn't that fire you up though a little bit? No, nah, it, it does, but that's but that's also like, I almost feel like it's the old version of me versus the new version of me where I'm at today, and then I, I change my goals every single year, and I try to look for new things to kind of, so when I look back at my old goals and see the things that I, I wanted and I achieved, I'm just like, it's crazy, man. It's, it's crazy how the mind works. It's crazy how the universe works, and even if it doesn't go your way, it's just like, well, how do I pivot from here, and how do I get back on track or how do I try to get to some of these things that I want to get to and I think that's the most important thing that uh, I've learned over the years that the fucking road to success is not just like this dude oh it's man that bitch close like, you do dips it's yeah. peaks and valleys it's crisscrosses it's detours it's pitchforks in the road it's booby traps it's quicksand and it's just like you have to be like so mentally tough and it's not easy to just block everything out ignore everything and i i always have like a rule and it's kind of like you have my thing that people say 24 hours i, I say you have like two or three days to kind of feel sorry for yourself and after that it's kind of like all right what now yeah. you're gonna feel sorry for yourself for the rest of your life no motherfucker. i'm a man at the end of the day you got to figure that shit out. Yeah. Whether it is fighting, whether it is something else, it's just you can't always be sorry for it. And that's one of the things I learned through wrestling is like wrestling beat me down so many different times. I've lost matches to guys I should have been, should have beaten, should have gone to the state tournament, should have done this, should have been able to go D1. I didn't get to do any of those things. And I've learned so many valuable lessons of just what it is to work hard. And even if you work hard, sometimes you're not guaranteed to get what you want to get. You can work so hard and sometimes you are not guaranteed to have success. It could just not be your time. This guy just might be more talented. He might have favoritism. It does not matter. Sometimes you're just competing against the odds and no matter how hard you work, but at least you know you tried your best. At least you know you gave it everything. And at least you know when you do all those things, sometimes the universe just finds a way to give you a chance or an opportunity. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. So, Can't say it better. That's, that's fighting for me, man. And I, 
I'm 34 and I realize the door is closing. I, I, I don't want to fight Tom Forty. Could I? Yeah. I haven't taken that much damage throughout my entire career. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be one of those guys who tarnishes their legacy and everything they've accomplished. And obviously the shit hurts. <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things I recognize. Like I, I try to enjoy the moment as much as I can. And that was part of the reason why I even took this fight. I'm like, if I let Sean go fight someone else and he loses, I don't get the opportunity that I had in Boston. Yeah. So. I see. It, it is what it is. And sometimes life is about taking chances, risk versus reward. And the juice was, you know, more than worth the squeeze, and I took a chance. And sometimes that's what it's about. If you don't always, you don't always succeed. Yeah. And I've been here before. And it's just like, ah. Like people feel more sorry for me than I feel sorry for myself. I'm just like, why do you feel sorry for me? Like, there's someone else out there who should be, like, you should be feeling sorry for them. Like, this, I can have it so much worse. But, but like we were you know, talking earlier. So it's like perspective. Right, don't you find it interesting how, like, when you're, when you're crushing, everyone's like, fuck this guy. And then, but they want to see you lose, or when you lose, they feel sorry for you. Yeah. And it's like they were waiting for you to fall down. Yeah, and then it's, it's, I think it's American culture, and then we, yeah. we, we love a good comeback story. Yeah. And hopefully I could give that good comeback story. If not, it is what it is. Like, at the end of the day, that doesn't dictate how hard I'm going to work in the room. That doesn't dictate how hard I'm going to work when I fight and compete. You know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Yeah. And uh, as they say, inshallah. <laughs> yeah. You know, if it's God's will, it's God's will, bro.